All right, welcome back. Let's talk about rocks and the rock cycle. So there is a difference between minerals and rocks. I'll explain in just a moment. Um, but this is the rock cycle. It's, the, for lack of a better term, the cyclical nature of how rocks change from one form to another, or from one rock type to another. We typically start off talking about igneous rocks, and that's where Unit 6, where we will talk about igneous rocks and volcanoes, um, you take those rocks, you break them down, it's a process called weathering, and you move them, it's called erosion, and you deposit that material and turn it to stone, that creates sedimentary rock, that's what we'll look at in Unit 7. You apply some heat and pressure to sedimentary rock, they turn into metamorphic rock, that's Unit 8. Now, it doesn't always have to go in that circle. It could go from igneous rock to metamorphic rock, back to igneous rock, over to sedimentary rock. It goes any which way. For the sake of the story, we'll, talk, we'll first talk about igneous rocks, and I'll explain a little bit about what they are today, but that's Unit 6, sedimentary rocks, Unit 7, metamorphic rocks, Unit 8. So, all right, here we go. What is the difference between a rock and a mineral? If I threw both at you, they'd, they'd hurt. They both hurt pretty bad. They're hard. They're both stones, but there is a difference. So a rock is defined as a naturally formed coherent aggregate of minerals, two or more, usually, and, po and possibly other non-mineral matter. Long story short, rocks are typically two or more minerals mushed together. So you take some quartz and you take... Uh, you take some uh, 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 feldspar, and you take some, some micas, and you mush them all together. These are different types of minerals. You mush them all together, and you can make, for instance, an igneous rock called granite. So rocks are usually two or more minerals combined. Sometimes, sometimes they can just be one altered mineral making a, a rock. But typically, it's two or more minerals combined. And sometimes they have other non-mineral matter. Sometimes it's organic itself. So rocks can have organic material or be made of organic material. Um, but the general definition is, for the most part, two or more minerals combined. But there's always exceptions. Or, or excuse me, <coughs> uh, rocks <coughs> do a great job <coughs> of recording Earth's history and processes. So rocks tell a story as well. They're great storytellers. If I'm out hiking, uh, if I'm out hiking, I can pick up a rock, and from that rock, I can tell a story of the area. It's pretty powerful stuff. So, as mentioned, igneous rocks. Um, igneous rocks are formed from cooled magma, which is molten rock below Earth's surface. And if it cools below Earth's surface, it's known as an intrusive igneous rock. It cooled and formed inside the Earth. Or when molten rock kind of makes its way to the surface, it's called lava. Two different names for the same exact thing, just depending on where it's at. But if lava cools at the surface, then it cools really quickly. And I'll give you a different kind of uh, characteristics to, to an igneous rock. And these are known as extrusive igneous rocks. So in general, igneous rocks are formed from the cooling and solidifying of magma deep below the surface or lava on the surface. The type of igneous rock that's formed depends a lot on cooling rate, how fast it cools. For instance, if lava on the surface, where it's cool, uh, extrudes out onto the surface, it cools very quickly. Whereas molten rock below their surface, magma, is bubbling up, it might stop. It might take longer to cool down because it's in a hotter environment, so it's going to take longer to cool down. Since this magma takes longer to cool down, as the magma begins to cool, the different minerals that were all melted start to crystallize and can grow a little bit bigger crystals. Not, they can be huge, but they you know grow little 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 crystals and rocks that come from solidified magma. You can pick out the different little crystals in it. You can pick out the different little crystals in it. I don't know if I have. So for instance, this is a type of granite. You can see the different kind of colored pieces. There's some white stuff, some orange stuff, some black stuff. So all of these different minerals, as they were cooling, had time to grow because it cooled underground. So this rock tells me this formed underground. Well, if I found this when I'm out hiking around, 
What's the story there? It was formed underground, but now I found it on the surface. Therefore, there must have been some sort of tectonic activity to push this area up to expose this type of rock. But I can take that the very same molten material that that's made of, shoot it to the surface, it will cool very quickly and look different. Same chemical composition, but the crystals are so small because it, this lava cooled very quickly. Under a microscope, you could see, under a microscope, it might look like this, but to the naked eye, it just kind of looks like a pinkish rock. You know, you can't see the differences. So again, sometimes these igneous rocks have visible grains of minerals. That shows an intrusive igneous rock. Um, if they don't, if you only see them under a microscope, that's an extrusive igneous rock. And sometimes igneous rocks have vesicles, little holes uh, from air gas bubbles. So <clears throat> sometimes when lava is shot out of a volcano, or when the, the, the lava itself is just full of dissolved gases, as it's erupting out, <clears throat> as that lava cools very quickly, little small little holes get uh, uh, kind of uh, air pockets are, are trapped in that lava as it's cooling very quickly. So you'll see little air bubbles, little vesicles. So for instance, you'll see uh, rocks with little pits in it. Uh, those are all little air bubbles. So this material cooled very quickly. You, you can tell that both of these are cooled lava. So scoria and basalt. Whereas you see rocks like this, there's no holes to it. You can pick out the different mineral grains, pinks and whites and grays and blacks, which is very similar to this rock. This is a granite. This cooled below ground. Same thing here, another granite. You can see, you can pick out some of the crystals. So we'll take unit six to dive into igneous rocks a little bit more. <clears throat> then next on the cycle, as the story goes, Remember, this, the rock cycle can go any which way, but for the sake of the story, we'll next talk about sedimentary rocks in Unit 7. These form from deposited, compacted, and naturally cemented together sediments. Sediments are any broken down piece of rock. So if I took this rock and started smacking it with a hammer, all these little pieces of rock are considered sediment. Different sediments are based on just size, not what they're made of, but just the size of the, the pieces that are broken off. And depending on what size pieces get deposited, compacted, and cemented together, you get different sedimentary rocks. These typically form under conditions of low pressure and low temperature, nearish the surface, maybe a, a, few, a mile or two below the surface. <clears throat> They're made up, sedimentary rocks are always made up of layers or, or pieces called clasts. Oftentimes they have a very earthy color. Sometimes they're gritty. For instance, sand is a sediment, and when you compress sand and naturally cement it together under low heat and low pressure, you get a type of rock called sandstone. Stone, it's a rock, but it's very, very gritty. It feels like sandpaper because it was made of sand. So they're, oftentimes sedimentary rocks are gritty, earthy colors. Not always, but oftentimes. So you can see uh, they're made up of different pieces that have been kind of cemented together. They have layers. There's some grittiness to it. You can feel it. Um, some sedimentary rocks are, are rather rather smooth, and you can't, it, to your fingers, it feels smooth. <laughs> but another way to, to see if it really is gritty and maybe a sedimentary rock, you, you take this real smooth rock and you throw it in your mouth and you kind of grind it around on your teeth, and it'll tell you if it's gritty or not done that too. So unit seven, we'll come back to sedimentary rocks formed from deposited, compacted, and cemented together sediment, pieces of broken down rock. And then the third kind of, of rock in the cycle we'll talk about in unit eight is metamorphic rocks. These are existing rocks. They already exist. It could be an igneous rock. It could be a sedimentary rock. It could be a different metamorphic rock. You expose that existing rock to high temperature and high pressure, or both, and it will change the existing rock. It will morph the existing rock into something new. Not so much heat and pressure that it melts, then we begin back into the igneous rock realm, but just enough heat and pressure to make it do weird things. Heat it up so you can stretch it, alter it a little bit. You're not melting it, but just enough heat and pressure to, to be able to change it. Oftentimes, what you're looking at are uh, for in, if you're trying to identify metamorphic rocks is something called foliation, which are thin, repetitive layers of minerals banded together. A little bit different than layers. 
So I, maybe I shouldn't use that word. Strike that I use that word. Uh, sometimes in metamorphic rocks, they look squished or elongated, almost like you took Play-Doh and kind of stretched it. Sometimes they're very, very shiny and sparkly. They're very odd looking rocks. They're, they're very strange rocks. Most people tend to like the metamorphic rocks of the three just because they're so odd and weird looking. So these are all great examples of metamorphic rocks. The pictures don't do it justice. Uh, you know, looking at them in class will be a lot better. But, you know, they have some banding to it. They have sometimes giant gems embedded in, it, in them. Sometimes they're very shiny and sparkly. Again, more kind of weird stretched layers. So it looks like this stuff is kind of been stretched out. Very odd rocks. But it's existing rocks that have undergone some heat and pressure, high heat and pressure, to change. Not melt all the way, because then we'd be back into igneous rock. But just enough heat and pressure to somehow change existing rocks. So where do we find all of these rocks? So again, igneous rocks are tied closely to volcanoes or magma chambers that feed those volcanoes. Sedimentary rock is broken down rock material building up in layers, uh, causing things to uh, deposit, compact, and naturally cement. Oftentimes, sedimentary rocks are found at or near the uh, shallows of the ocean. And then metamorphic rocks, places where there's high heat, high pressure. So, for instance, at convergent boundaries or just on the outside of large molten magma chambers. The stuff is so hot that it will heat up the rock around it, bake it, and change it a little bit. <clears throat> That's just a quick once-over of the rock cycle. Again, we will uh, break down each of those in successive units. So we'll spend about a month or so talking about this stuff, minerals and different types of rocks, we'll throw in volcanoes in there as well, tie it into plate tectonics since the rock cycle merges with the plate tectonic cycle. <clears throat> but again, this, this rock cycle isn't just, it's not always igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. It can go any which way, depending on the processes, plate tectonics, whatever else is going on. It can go any number of ways. Um, and this is kind of a great example of Earth and how it recycles. All right, rocks, you know, they kind of just change from one form to, to the next, from one form to the next. So again, in general though, rocks can be defined as two or more minerals combined. There are some exceptions. Some rocks are one mineral. Some have also some added uh, uh, biologic uh, stuff in them. But for the most part, rocks are two or more minerals combined. For instance, you take some quartz, you take some different types of feldspars, orthoclase, plagioclase, different types of micas, muscovite, biotite. We'll look at all of these in class in this unit. But you combine these, melt them, cool them underground. They form this intrusive igneous rock called granite. You take that granite, you uplift it due to some tectonic activity. You, you weather it, break it down by the weather and the sun and water breaking it down, those little pieces collect, they, they're deposited, they build up, they're, they're uh, compressed together and cemented together. Then you, you take that material and you create sandstone, which is a sedimentary rock. Then you take that sandstone, apply heat and pressure, not enough to melt it, but enough to alter it and change it. You can eventually get a metamorphic rock called gneiss, is how that's pronounced. So all three of these can be made up of the same stuff, but just how those minerals got to those rocks, uh, the different processes to create that rocks give us these different rocks. So let's go ahead and pause there. When we'll come back, uh, this unit is just on minerals. Again, that was just a little introduction to rocks. More on those in units six, seven, and eight. When we'll come back, we'll talk about mining minerals specific to Arizona. We do a lot of mining in Arizona. Most of what we are after our minerals. So we'll take some time just to show you a little bit about that and that should end our unit uh, lecture. I'll see you back here in just a second.